Good morning. Welcome to the Daily Office. I'm Brother Bill, and I'm so glad you could join me. This is morning prayer for Tuesday, February the 7th. It's year two. It's week five after Epiphany, and it's week five in the Psalm cycle. And the scripture for this service, Psalm 78, verse 1 to 39. John chapter 7, verse 53 to chapter 8, verse 11. And the song of Zechariah, Luke 1, verse 68 to 79. Open my lips, my mouth shall declare your praise. Alleluia, give heed, my people, to my teaching. Turn your ear to the words of my mouth. Alleluia. Psalm 78. <clears throat> give heed, my people, to my teaching. Turn your ear to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable and reveal hidden lessons of the past. The things we have heard and understood, the things that our ancestors told us, that these we will not hide from our children, but will tell them to the next generation. The glories and the might of God the Most High, and the marvelous deeds that God has done, setting a witness in Jacob, Leah, and Rachel, and establishing the law in Israel. God gave a command to our ancestors to make it known to their children, that the next generation might know it, the children yet to be born. They too should rise and tell their children that they too should set their hope in God and never forget God's deeds, but keep every one of God's commands. So they might not be like their ancestors, a people rebellious and stubborn, a people whose heart was fickle, whose spirit was unfaithful to God. Ephraim's people, armed with the bow, turned back in the day of battle. They failed to keep God's covenant and would not walk according to God's law. They forgot what God had done, the marvels that God had shown them, wonders done in the sight of their ancestors, in Egypt, in the plains of Zoan. God divided the sea and led them through and made the waters stand up like a wall leading them by day with a cloud, by night with the light of a fire. God split the rocks in the desert and gave them plentiful drink as from the deep, made streams flow out from the rock and made waters run down like rivers. And yet they continued to sin. They defied the Most High in the desert. In their hearts they put God to the test by demanding the food that they craved. They even spoke against God. They said, Is it possible for God to prepare a table in the desert? It was God who struck the rock. Water flowed and swept down in torrents. But can God also give us bread and provide meat for his people? On hearing this, you were angry. A fire was kindled against Jacob, and anger rose against Israel for having no faith in you, for refusing to trust your divine help. You commanded the clouds above and opened the gates of heaven and rained down manna for their food and gave them bread from heaven. Mere mortals ate the bread of angels. You sent them meat in abundance and made the east wind blow from heaven and roused the south wind with might. You rained food on them like dust, winged fowl like the sands of the sea and let it fall in the midst of their camp and all around their tents. And so they ate and had their fill, for you gave them all they craved. But before they had sated their cravings, and while the food was still in their mouths, your anger rose against them, and you slew the strongest among them and struck down the flower of Israel. And despite this, they went on sinning. They had no faith in such wonders. So you ended their days like a breath and their years in sudden ruin. When you slew them, they would seek you, return and seek you in earnest, as they remembered that you were their rock, you the Most High, their Redeemer. But the words they spoke were mere flattery. They lied to you with their lips, for their hearts were not truly sincere. They were not faithful to your covenant. Yet you are full of compassion and forgave them their sin and spared them. So often you held back the anger that might have been stirred up in rage. 
that might have been stirred up in rage. You remembered that they were only human, a breath that passes never to return. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Give heed, my people, to my teaching. Turn your ear to the words of my mouth. Alleluia. The lesson is from the Holy Gospel according to John, chapter 7, beginning at verse 53. The woman caught in adultery. Then each of them went home, and while Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, early in the morning he came again to the temple. All the people came to him and sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, and making her stand before all of them, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law of Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They said this to test him, so that they might have some charge to bring against him. And Jesus bent down and wrote with, with his finger on the ground. And when they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and he said, Let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And once again he bit down and wrote on the ground. And when they had heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. And Jesus was left alone, with the woman standing before him. Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? And she said, No one, sir. And Jesus said, Then neither do I condemn you. Go your way, and from now on, do not sin again. Here ends the lesson. Now let us offer our prayers and petitions for the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love and found without fault on the day of your coming. For all of our church leaders and for all the holy people of God, for all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease and that all may be one as you and the Father are one. For peace in Jerusalem and unity in the church and peace in the whole world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and people. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and for all who suffer and grieve, for refugees and prisoners and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. For this congregation, for those who are present and those who are absent, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all we do. For our enemies and for those who wish us harm, for all whom we have injured or offended. We pray for William and Sarah Elizabeth, and Stephen, and Stephen Edward, and Martin, and for all who died in the communion of your church, and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with Francis and Claire and all the saints, they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. For the mercy of God community, that it may continue to rush toward Christ, that God who's begun this ministry may bring it to fulfillment, for the intentions of all who've asked our prayers and for all of your intentions. Our beloved which art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us as we forgive others. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Blessed are you, O God of Israel. You've come to your people and set us free. The Song of Zechariah. Blessed are you, O God of Israel. You've come to your people and set us free. 
You've raised for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets you promised of old that you would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. You promised to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to Abraham and Sarah, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous in your sight all the days of our lives. And you, my child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before our God to prepare the way, to give the people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Blessed are you, O God of Israel. You've come to your people and set us free. We trust in the mercy of God forever. And glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. <laughs> 